Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. It is a pleasure to be back. And as promised, we have another working week and want to dig in from the experience at Mount Moriah. We are still looking at Abraham and his son Isaac. And today we are at Genesis 22 and we'll look at verses 7 up to 10. It says at verse 7, Then Isaac spoke to his father Abraham and said, My father. And he replied, Here I am, son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here. But where is the lamb of the band offering? Verse 8, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the band offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. Verse 9, when they arrived at the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Verse 10, as we come to an end, then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. And before we reflect on the five points for this week, let us spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of calling upon your name. Here is the word that is before us, and dear Lord, you are our Father. We are your sons, we are your daughters. Allow us to speak to you freely and speak to us through your word. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we ask and pray, amen and amen. Let us quickly dive into the word, and the first point I want to bring to your attention is that Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for the band offering? Now, I am sure there were four of them on this voyage, Abraham, Isaac, and the two unnamed servants. The servants must have noticed that the lamb was missing, but they could not ask Abraham, where is the lamb? It only took Isaac to ask the question, where is the lamb, my father? There are some questions that cannot be asked by everyone of anyone. Some questions can only be asked on a relational basis between father and son, between father and daughter. And indeed, we find Isaac taking advantage of this relationship to ask Abraham the difficult question that his servants could not have asked. And I want to challenge you as we go into this week, take time to talk to your father. Ask him those questions that nobody can ask. He is ready to give you an answer. Point number two, as he is ready to give you your answer, some answers are better not shared. Just imagine the question that Isaac puts to Abraham, where is the lamb? Here is the answer, the appropriate answer that Abraham should have given, you are the lamb, my son. Was Isaac prepared for that answer? There are some questions that we're going to put through to God and God might not give us the answers because we are not ready for them. We're not prepared to receive such answers. And therefore, God either says, wait, or he gives us an answer that is a one size fit all. And at point number three, we find Abraham giving the one size fits all an answer that answers all types of questions. And here goes the answer. God himself will provide the lamb for the band offering. Many a times when we are not satisfied or we are not ready for the answers that we're supposed to receive, where we are told you are headed to the precipice, this shall be your last day in life. This will be your last week. Some of us will never even watch this video again. This may be the last time, but we might not want to tell you that. We're going to say God will provide. God always does provide. Of course, we may, he may not provide in the way we want him to provide, but he always does provide. And after Abraham gives this young man a satisfactory answer, God will provide. Guess what? The two of them continue to walk together. May I talk to your father and the son? When last did you walk together? Mother and daughter, when last did you walk together? Employer and employee, when last did you walk together? Only as we relate according to the work of God and according to his word and we believe God will provide, are we able to walk together? 
There shall be peace in the family when we know God is our chief provider. He does provide. Point number four. They don't keep walking forever. Some of us have been walking and it is an endless journey. But here is the answer. They arrived at verse 9. When they arrived at the place God had told him about, God will lead us to our destination. God does not only lead us, but we will arrive. He has told us there is a day that is coming. And in that day, we shall be saved. Guess what? That day will arrive. And we too will, uh, we will arrive. It shall be a pointless, it shall not be a pointless walk. Because if we do not arrive, it becomes a pointless journey. God makes sure that we arrive. And may God see us to our destinations safely. May God see to it that we arrive at our destinations as per the plan. Just as God has revealed it unto us at point number five. As we come to an end, Abraham has arrived at the mountaintop. What is the first thing he does? He prepares the altar. The second thing he does, he binds his son. Binds his son. And I, I want you to just dig in with me and allow your, your memory to wander with me, your imagination to wander with me. May I borrow it for a moment? Imagine this. Abraham is more than 100 years old. I do not want to believe Abraham could have overpowered Isaac. As Isaac is being bound, Isaac could have run for his life. Isaac could have even resisted being bound, but he is bound by a hundred-year-old man, and he is lifted up and placed on the altar. This I see as the trust that a son has in a father, that a father will do me no harm, a father will do what is good for me. And I also see the trust that the son Abraham has in his heavenly father, that when the heavenly father says, it should be done, I will do it nonetheless. I'm seeing the earthly son trusting the earthly father. And I'm seeing the earthly son trusting the heavenly father. The question is, as we come to the end of this day, are you prepared to trust your earthly parent? Has trust been lost? It is high time it becomes repaired. Are you willing above all to trust your heavenly father? Has trust been lost? It is time it be repaired. And the question is, how far are you willing to go? When God has said, it should be done. My dear friends, as we come to the close of our discussion for this morning, what are the five points I leave with you? Point number one, not everyone can ask questions of everyone and anyone. Some questions are reserved for our children for those who have a special relationship with us. Point number two, some of the questions we ask, we may get answers that we are not prepared for. Accept it. When those answers are too difficult for you, you may not get an exact answer because you're not yet prepared for it. Point number three, there are some answers that even when we have difficult questions that cannot be given direct answers, such answers, they give us hope they give unity and they'll keep us together. God is the ultimate provider. Point number four. We shall arrive at our destinations. It is not a pointless journey. God will see to it that what he says will happen will come to pass. And above all, how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go with your earthly parents? How far are you willing to go with your heavenly parent? May God bless you. May God keep you until you meet again on Friday as we near the end on the mountaintop in Moriah. Blessings and peace.